Luke chapter number 17 and verse number 11. The Bible said, And it came to pass, as Jesus went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, the Bible said, which stood afar off. Uh, stood afar off. And the Bible said that they were far enough away that they lifted up their voices and they said, Jesus, Master, Rabbi, he said, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priest. And they were the only ones that day that could give them leave to go back into their regular lives before this leprosy had affected them. And he, so Jesus said, you know, go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, the Bible said they were cleansed. I mean, that's, that's powerful. They, they didn't have to go, but they did. And when they did, God did. Amen? Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. It may not make sense to you. You just better do what God says do. Amen? And as one of them, when he saw that he was healed, I like this right here. It must have been a must have been a Pentecostal. The Bible said he turned back with a loud voice. A loud voice. He glorified God. And then the Bible said that he fell down on his face at the feet of Jesus. The Bible said giving him thanks, and he was a Sumerian. Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed? He said, where's the nine at that I touched? Where's the others? He said, there are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. <laughs> and he said unto him, arise and go thy way. Here it is. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Father, I pray that you'd touch us in this hour. God, I pray that you'd speak to us from your word. Give us, Lord, that which we stand in need of. And we'll be ever careful to give you the honor the glory, and all the praise, for we ask all things in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, you can be seated. Ten men were cleansed. How many is good in math? Ten men were cleansed. Only one returned to give thanks unto God. Only one out of the ten. Where's the nine? Jesus said, where is the nine? I had a bunch of titles this morning on where's the nine. Don't start to whine when you're part of the nine. Amen? Don't, don't, there's a lot of people, they, they spend their life whining because they're part of the nine. They don't have a thankful heart, a grateful heart. I thought about preaching on the one that won. The O-N-E, the W-O-N. The one that won. The score was one to nine, and the one won. He's the one that got the blessing from God. So there's a lot of things in this, but it's Thanksgiving. So I had to, you know, change gears here. Here's what I want to preach on this morning with this simple thought, the power of Thanksgiving. The pow what was it that changed in this story because of the power of Thanksgiving? And I want to look in these verses of Scripture and uh, give you some thoughts the Lord has laid on our hearts for this time. Amen. And then we're going to go eat some turduncan. I'm looking forward to that this morning. All right. So, in the story, you've got ten men. Ten men that had been diseased with leprosy. And the Bible said that they saw Jesus, and they were a long distance away, and they, they cried out, and they asked God for mercy. They asked Jesus for mercy. And the reason they were a long distance away was because leprosy was one of the most feared diseases of the day. These men were outcast of their day. These people, uh, people didn't want to touch them for fear of getting the disease. I, I was going to relate it to AIDS this morning, but it's kind of like COVID-19. I mean, they're shielded up and they got face masks on. The only difference is this has got a 100% death rate, okay? So this is a real disease. You don't have a 99 
6.8% survival rate. This is 100%. You're dead. You're done. And if you come in contact with anybody with leprosy, it was highly contagious in that day. And so people couldn't be around them. I mean, if you go to the book of Leviticus, you can read the law for those that were found with leprosy. The law required that they be separated and excommunicated from all the other people. And when these men, they saw Jesus, they cried out for mercy. Amen. And Jesus, he did something miraculous that day. He didn't have to, but he healed them all. And when they realized that they were healed, they all ran off in excitement and to go tell what had been done with the exception of one man. One man that made the difference. One man that made this story so powerful in the scriptures this morning. One man took the time. That's the key word this morning. One man took the time to worship and to thank Jesus for what he had done. I'm going to be honest with you. The other nine, they didn't have time. They didn't have time. And the reason we're seeing an unthankful generation today is because they lack the time. They lack the opportunity. It's almost like going down to Walmart. They've got Halloween. I mean, on every aisle. You can get whatever you want Halloween-wise. And the minute Halloween is done... They start setting out Christmas trees. <laughs> I mean, and then you've got wrapping paper, and then you've got all the Christmas ornaments. And I thought about they don't have time for Thanksgiving. They don't have time to turn thanks towards heaven. By the way, the reason we have Thanksgiving today is because those early pilgrims that suffered that horrible winter and lost, lost over 50% of their own people that came and started this country, when they survived that harsh first winter, they gathered around and they had a time of thanksgiving and they celebrated with the Indians. The pilgrims celebrated with the Indians and they gave thanks unto God. Matter of fact that's one of the first acts that ever took place in our Congress was when they gave thanks unto God. There is power in thanksgiving. And this thanksgiving that this man had, it affected every part of his life. And I want to share it with you this morning. The first thing I want you to notice in verse number 14, the Bible said Jesus told him, he said, go show yourselves unto the priest. And the Bible said that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back. Don't you underscore that word? He turned back. When he saw that he was healed, he turned back. Let me give you the power of Thanksgiving this morning. It will affect your direction in life. He turned back. There's only one that turned back. The reason he turned back, we, we finally read, that he was thankful. He wanted to give gratitude. He had a grateful heart. He had a thankful heart, and he wanted to turn back and thank Jesus for what he had done in his life. Let me tell you something about a thanksgiving and a thankful heart. It's going to affect your direction in life. I mean, the, listen, it, it, it's, it's well known that your attitude will determine your altitude. Yep. I mean, you can really excel in life if you've got a thankful heart, if you're appreciative, if you're thankful. And I'm going to tell you something, the flesh don't like that. No way. The, hey, it, it's easier not to say thank you. It's easier not to take the time to give thanks. It's, it, that's what we're trying to instill in our children. You know, we go to the restaurant, and they bring them. They say, can we get, some, can we get a refill in our cup? We want to make sure our kids look at that waitress and say, you tell them thank you. You tell them thank you. And we're trying to instill that in the children. Because, listen, it determines your direction in life. Listen, you want to get ahead in life and you want God to bless you, become thankful. Become appreciative. Say, yes, sir, no, ma'am, but absolutely thank you. I mean, there's a lot of people that's helped me along the way. There's a lot of people that's helped you along the way. And listen, we are to be thankful for those individuals. We're to be grateful for those individuals. All of them turned and they went their own separate ways, but there was one that took the time to go back and thank Jesus. Listen, Jesus told them, he said, go to the priest and show yourself 
himself to the priest. All nine of them did exactly what Jesus said. They went to the priest. What made this one different was he didn't go to the priest. He went to the great high priest. Amen. He went to the king of kings and he went to the Lord of lords. Amen. There's, there's a difference between the priest and the priest. Amen. And when he heard to go to the priest, he said, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop and I'm going to thank the great high priest first. Amen. None of them were obligated to turn back. Think about that. None of them were told to come back and give thanks. Jesus told them to go show yourself to the priest. But this man was so filled with joy. He was so filled with gladness. He was so filled with thankfulness. He was so filled with gratefulness that it literally changed his direction. Something inside of him said, go back, turn around, and thank Jesus for what he's done. That's what we are to do in this Thanksgiving season. We're to take the time and go back and say, thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Has God been good to anybody here this morning? Has God ever met any of your needs? Has God supplied every need you've ever needed, every want? I mean, just about every want you need. He provides those as well. We are to thank him and our direction should be turned towards him and towards turn the cross. I don't think you can go wrong turning towards Jesus. I don't think you can go wrong turning towards the cross. I don't think you can go wrong turning, turning towards God. Thankfulness and a grateful heart will always lead you to Jesus. And again, he's not forced. It's optional. Talk about the free will of man. He had the free will. He could have went with the other nine. You know, it's easier to just go with the crowd. Not this guy. He wasn't part of the crowd. I'm going to be honest with you. Most of the time, the majority's wrong. It's the minority that's right. Jesus said, broad is the way that leadeth to death and destruction. Narrow is the way that leadeth to life eternal. Hey, it, 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 it's, that, it's that small group that are thankful. That, hey, they're not forced. It's optional. We've got free will. But it produced literally a change in this man's life. It changed his direction. This thankful heart, the, the power of thanksgiving, not only did it affect his direction, but number two, think about this, it changed his exaltation. Look at verse number 15. The Bible said, and as he turned back with a loud voice, he glorified God. With a loud voice, he magnified God. With a loud voice, he praised God. Let me just break this down into good old Georgia vernacular English. He shouted it out. <laughs> and then the Bible said, Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. And the Bible said that these ten lepers eat up in leprosy. They turn, and as they went, they were healed. They started looking at their skin. They started looking at one another. They, start, hey, they said, boy, I feel good on the inside. I feel like I once did. I mean, the issue of blood dried up. Their skin sores dried. It was gone. I mean, they had perfect skin, perfect health. And all of a sudden, I mean, all nine of them, they took off running to the priest. They're ready to get back to their job. They're ready to get back to their life. They're ready to get back to the things. That, but this old boy <laughs> that had that miracle take place in his life, I'm going to tell you something. So, something inside of him said, Whoopee! <laughs> Hallelujah! Praise God! The Bible said, Jesus heard, the Bible said he shouted. Jesus heard it a long ways off. This guy is having a shouting fit. Now, I'm going to tell you, that's what Thanksgiving is. It's a free, it's an open, it's an acknowledgement of the mercy that you've received from Jesus Christ. And you ought to wake up every morning and you ought to be like this old leper where the law had you divided and the law had you cut off and the law had you hemmed up and you're eat up in disease and there was nothing you could do about it. But one day Jesus passed by your way and Jesus cleaned up your life and he took away the sin out of your life and he reversed the curse and he removed the leprosy of sin in your life you ought to wake up every morning and just take you a minute and say thank you Lord for your blessings on me it's good to be saved amen it's good to be saved it's good to be saved hallelujah and he glorified God what, what happened to the other nine they didn't have time. They didn't have time. But this old one boy, them old timers would say something like this, he got the can't help it. 
I mean, verse 13, he's crying. Look at what the Bible said. Verse 13, he lifted up his voice and he cried, have mercy on us. They all cried, have mercy on us. Verse 15, hey, 13, he's shouting and crying for mercy. Verse 15, he's shouting and crying because of mercy. <laughs> it affected his exaltation. He was a crying for mercy, but now he's crying because of mercy. It's affected this man. What God done on the inside has appeared to affect him on the outside. And he's exalting, and he's praising, and he's giving God glory. It do you good every once in a while just to praise God and shout. And say, thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Amen. It's contagious. And he exalted and he praised God. And he did it with a loud voice. I mean, hey, look, I know some people say, oh, I just, that's just not me. I, I'm just not that way. I'm just not programmed that way. Uh, look up in here. You let your son hit a, not even a grand slam or a home run. You let him hit a single and get on first base. You shout and you pass out. Or a grandkid. I mean, you let your favorite football team cross. I mean, it's, it, hey, we're down in the fourth quarter. It's a tie game, and a field goal won't do, and it's fourth down, and they hand it to the old running back, and somehow he plows through that crowd and makes the touchdown. What do you do? Whoop. Yeah. <laughs> what would y'all do during the World Series? Whoop. Freddie Freeman caught that ball at first base. You, you about passed out. You about shouted it out. Yeah. Hey, well, I, well, hey, I'm gonna tell you something. I could I got the can't help it's when I saw when I when when I saw Kevin Harvick wreck and hit the wall because he thought Chase was gonna hit him. I mean he was right on his tail. He you know he's looking at his rear view mirror, and I thought oh, he's gonna hit him, he's gonna hit him, he's gonna hit him. And then Kevin he overdrove the corner and hit the wall, and that put Chase in the championship. I said, Praise God. They ought to be ringing the bell in Dawsonville, Georgia. Something great just happened. Hey, Amen. Chase Elliott's going to the championship. He's gonna make the top four. Praise God. Woo! But a year from now, two years from now, I won't even remember that. I can't even tell you the last time the, the Braves won the World Series, other than this year. People's trying to figure it out. They're like, was it 93, 96? When, 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 when did we win? Because it don't matter. I'm going to tell, tell you what does matter. <laughs> he's all that matters. He's all together lovely. If he's changed your life, if he's brought you out of the mire and put you in the choir and give you a Holy Ghost shower, you ought to say amen every once in a while, praise God. It affected his exaltation. It affected his direction. Number three, it affected his affection. <laughs> Look, if you would, at verse number 16. The Bible said not only did he shout it out, but look at verse 16. That wasn't enough for this old boy. The Bible said that he ran and he fell down on his face <laughs> at the feet of the one who touched him. Instead of going to the local priest, instead of being restored back into society, he took the time to return. He took the time to come back. He took the time to fall down on his face at the feet of Jesus. And he poured out his joy. And he poured out his thanks. And he poured out his praise. All because of the healing that God had done in his life. It's the power of thanksgiving. Right, I'm going to tell you something. It drew him to Jesus. Hey. It caused respect and reverence to Jesus. A thankful heart takes the time. I'll say this. A thankful heart makes the time. You can make the time or... Take the time. Amen. He, his, his affection was poured out literally at the feet of the Son of God. I'm getting hungry, and I got a lot of points. It affected his exaltation. It affected his affection. Hey, I'm going to tell you something else it done for this old boy. It eradicated his imperfection. Now, let's, let's see what the Bible says. The Bible said he fell down at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a what? A Jew? He was a Samaritan. He was a half-breed. He, hey, look, he was a low-down, dirty dog. That's all he was. He was a nobody. He had, look, this guy right here, he didn't have the Pentateuch give to him growing up like the other Jews did. 
He didn't know the law of Moses like, they, that, like those Jews did. He never had the gospel put in his life and in his family. The Jews had no dealing with the Samaritans. The Samaritans had no dealings with the Jews. Right. How about Jesus said, I tell you what, you don't go around judging a book by its cover. <laughs> Apparently, the other nine were Jews and this one was a Samaritan. And I'm going to tell you something. The power of thanksgiving overrode his nationality. The power of thanksgiving overrode his race. The power of thanksgiving overrode his ethnicity. The power of thanksgiving was greater than him being a half-breed or, or being even considered wicked. But thanksgiving overrode all that. Right. I'm going to tell you something. When you're in a foxhole and the bullets are flying, it don't matter if you're red, yellow, black, or white. You know what? You're thankful for one another. And I'm going to tell you something. Skin color and race and ethnicity, it does not matter because in that foxhole, you're thankful for the guy on the right and the guy on the left. Thanksgiving brings people together. Thanksgiving literally, truly eradicated this man's past. It didn't matter that he was a Samaritan. It didn't matter that he was a half-breed because he had Thanksgiving in his heart. Now, I'm going to tell you something. It'll get you a whole lot further in life. It don't matter what you've done. It don't matter where you I feel like preaching. It don't matter where you've been. How long you've been locked up. If you've got a thankful heart and you've got a grateful heart. God can bless you. God can use you. God can touch you in so many different ways. I'm telling you this morning it eradicated his imperfections. <laughs> Woo! Jesus said Where's the nine? He said, they're not found to return to give glory. Save this stranger. I want to tell you something. This not only affected this man's imperfections, affection, exaltation, direction. It affected Jesus' expectations. I, listen, think about this. It's clear that Jesus was literally, when he made this statement, where's the nine? His, he's mingling with surprise with grief, with indignation. He's ticked off. After all I've done, the only thanks I get is from a half-breed. From a stranger, from a foreigner. Can I say what a rebuke to the other nine? What, what a rebuke to the ungrateful and the unthankful. You know what the Bible says about that crowd in Timothy? The crowd that's ungrateful and the crowd that's unthankful, they're also unholy. They're unholy. They may have been cleansed on the outside, but nothing had taken place on the inside. I know a lot of people, they can put on a suit and tie and look pretty, and they can make you think that God's done something for them. But at the end of the day, they're just unthankful, ungrateful, and unholy. The nine, they had no gratitude for God. They had no gratitude for the benefactor who healed them, the one who touched them, the one who gave them the mercy they requested. But yet it was the Samaritan, <laughs> hallelujah, the one who Jesus would least expect to turn around and come back. Woo! And give gratitude. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> the one that was a nobody, uh, the one that had no direction in life, uh, and he's going back to a life that is secluded, and he's an outcast, uh, uh, but not at the feet of Jesus. Uh, I'm going to tell you something about the thanksgiving, the power of thanksgiving. It does something to the poor. It makes them rich. Uh, to the ignorant, uh, it makes them become learned. Uh, uh, to those that are young, uh, it shows that they've got age, amen, and wisdom. Uh, uh, never, never. Never judge a book by its cover. You find somebody with a thankful heart and a grateful heart. I'm going to tell you something. The expectations of them out blew Jesus' mind. The power of thanksgiving. It affected a lot of things. But I'm done. I'm finished. I'm done. We made it. It affected his what? 
It affected his direction. He turned back. It affected his exaltation. He glorified God. It affected his affection. He felt the feet of Jesus. It eradicated his imperfection. Oh, but wait a minute. The power of thanksgiving. I'm going to tell you what it did for this old boy. It affected his destination. His destination. Watch what happened. The Bible said, in Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? And he said unto this man, he said unto him, verse 19, arise, go thy way. Watch out now. Watch out now. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Do you know what that's translated in the Greek? Thy faith hath saved thee. Let me tell you something. This old boy was just like them other lepers. He was hell bound with the hammer down. And Jesus touched all ten of them and cleaned them up and gave them a new start and a new life. But wait. The one that decided to turn around and give God glory and acknowledge who God really was and then turn around and fall down at the feet of the Son of God. He's identifying with God the Father and he's identifying with God the Son. I'm telling you something, the Holy Ghost starts to get involved right here, friend. All of a sudden, Jesus looks at him and said, because of this thanksgiving, because you've turned around and because you've recognized who I am, and not because of what I've done, but because of who I am. I'm going to do something today far better than what I did but up there in the village. Hey, I might have delivered you from leprosy, but from this point on, young man, you're heaven bound with the hammer down. There's a change of direction in your life. There was a change of condemnation in this man's life. He literally passed from death unto life. God God done more for him on the inside than he could do on the outside. And this man's faith was made whole. Yes. Hey. <laughs> Nine. Nine of them had a complexion change. One of them had a resurrection change. Not only was this man's body healed, but God went ahead and healed his soul. The others had an outward cure. This old fellow received an inward cure. You say, you got any Bible for that? Yeah, I do. The Bible says that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. I'm going to tell you, what is repentance? It's a turning away. It's a turning back. Let me demonstrate. Repentance is this. That's repentance. What did everybody else do? They just went on back to their normal life. A bunch of ungrateful Jews, unthankful, unholy. But that old dog, that old sorry, low down, half breed Samaritan, got the can of help it. He said, Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Almighty. Hallelujah. Right. Something said turn back. And when he got back, I can tell you what, that old boy, he got down there, and it wasn't in his face. He got down there at his feet. Whew. I'm going to tell you the day God done something great in my life was the day I realized I was a rotten, low-down, sorry sinner on my way to hell. And thank God I turned back towards him. And I flung myself at the foot of the Nazarene. And praise God, he saved my soul. It's not because of what he's done. It's because of who he is. Salvation is not in a plan. Salvation is in a man. And his name is Jesus. Others had that outward cure. But this old boy, he got the inward cure. Arise, go thy way. And thy faith. You would think he would have said, Arise and go to the priest. He didn't have to tell him to go to the priest. He just left the priest. Jesus was the priest. 
He said, Arise and go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. I'm going to tell you, the power of thanksgiving changed this man's destination. He was thankful for the goodness of God. And it's the goodness of God that brought you here today. It's the goodness of God that puts you in this service. It was the goodness of God to let you hear the gospel. And it's the good, goodness of God to give you another breath to where you can fall on your knees and thank him one more time for being good to you. And if you've never been saved, amen, now's a good day to get saved. Now's a good time to say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and change my life. I'm going to tell you something. The crowd's wrong. The mob's wrong. It's that small group. It's that little minority. They're the ones that's got the truth. They're the ones that's got the light. And this old Samaritan, he got the goods that day. He got not only healed physically, not only did he get healed physically, but he got healed greater than that. He got healed spiritually.